Hello everyone. Greeting from Ganga Hospital, Coimbatore, India, and our anesthesia team. Today I will talk on a high volume proximal erector canal high-pack block, a procedure-specific motor sparing regional analgesia option for below knee joint surgeries. Before I start my presentation, I declare no conflict of interest or source of funding. Most of the images used in these presentations are my own images published in various articles and chapters. Hypac block is one of the innovation of our team. So far, three publications are available. It was introduced in May 2021. Later on, the anatomical description and technical description came in January 2022, and one prospective feasibility study. it got published in june 2022 so it is described as single injection dual target technique targeting saphenous nerve as well as sciatic nerve having fixed volume timing of the block and site of the block it is a type of precision regional anesthesia as it target specific innervation due to its extensive coverage we believe that it is a procedure specific based on the clinical findings statistical analysis and anatomical correlations we believe that it is motor sparing block due to effective analgesia provided by a hypac block it can be described as opioid sparing block it provides effective post operative analgesia if used as an adjunct to multimodal analgesia for all the surgeries involving below knee joint it is also considered as a suitable regional analgesia technique in surgeries which are prone to develop compartment syndrome my talk will focus on relevant anatomy relevant sonar anatomy drug distribution pattern and techniques of hypac block knowledge of anatomy is considered as the backbone of any regional analgesia technique to decide the target we should know the complete innervation of the structures involved in any particular procedure so knee joint is considered as a complexly innervated structure the anterior part of the knee joint is supplied by the lumbar plexus and posterior part of the knee joint is supplied by the sacral plexus through their various branches which forms three plexuses around the knee joint subsaudere plexus lies on the medial side of the thigh whereas popliteal plexus lies on the posterior side of the thigh and peripatellar plexus lies around the patella knowledge of complex innervation of the knee joint is very essential to select a particular procedure specific regional analgesia technique it includes innervation of dermatome osteotomes and myotomes of the knee joint along with the richly innervated anterior and posterior capsule of the knee joint area below the knee joint is not complexly innervated as knee joint the majority of the innervation comes from the sciatic nerve along with its branches tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve whereas minor contribution comes from the saphenous nerve which innervates the medial aspect of the leg as well as the bone osteotomal innervation over the medial condyle of the femur as well as medial malleolus the understanding of the hypac block which is given at the level of thigh depends on the anatomical knowledge of two prominent landmarks in the thigh femoral triangle and adductor canal both are separated by apex of femoral triangle which is nothing but the intersection point of medial border of sartorius and medial border of adductor longus if you see in this figure the femoral triangle the base is formed by inguinal ligament medial border is formed by the medial border of adductor longus and lateral border is formed by the medial border of sartorius the b point is the intersection point where the medial border of adductor longus and medial border of sartorius meets so this b point is nothing but the apex of the femoral triangle the area above apex of the femoral triangle is femoral triangle area 
whereas area below the apex of femoral triangle under the sartorius is considered as adductor canal area or subsartorial area so this femoral triangle and then muscular peroneurotic tunnel they form a funnel and tunnels of the thigh the adductor canal is a muscular aponeurotic tunnel in the middle of the thigh it extends from the apex of the femoral triangle above to the adductor hiatus below it is triangular in cross section bounded anterolaterally by vastus medialis muscle posterior medially by adductor longus muscle proximally and adductor magnus muscle distally medially it is bounded by vasoadductor membrane which is a strong fibrous membrane joining anterior and posterior wall the sartorius forms the roof of the adductor canal here if you see the nerve to vastus medialis lies outside the adductor canal above vasoadductor membrane in a separate facial sleeve between sartorius and vastus medialis whereas saphenous now enters into the adductor canal and lies below the vam vam is a vasoadductor membrane also called as vasto adductor membrane is nothing but the thickened fibrous connective tissue forming the medial border of adductor canal it is also called as medial intermuscular septum of the leg previously the adductor canal block was performed by keeping the probe in the mid thigh location and seeing the femoral artery exactly in the midpoint of the sartorius muscle and injecting local anesthetic around the saphenous nerve sometimes creating a horseshoe shaped spread later in 2017 wong et al tried to define the exact location of adductor canal using an ultrasound and by locating the apex of the femoral triangle as a beginning of adductor canal they found that mid thigh location here is a red arrow always lie proximal to the apex of the femoral triangle the blue arrow determines the apex of the femoral triangle so mid thigh adductor canal block is nothing but the femoral triangle block this is schematic representation of the adductor canal here three important anatomical events occur in this region first is entry of the femoral vessel superficial femoral vessel along with the saphenous nerve through the proximal opening then exit of the saphenous nerve along with the genicular vessel which are branches of the femoral vessels through the anterior opening by piercing vasoadductor membrane and third one is exit of the femoral vessel through the distal opening called as adductor hiatus and continuing as a popliteal vessels here the posterior division of obturator now directly enters the adductor hiatus and accompanying the popliteal vessels if you see here the nerve to vastus medialis lies outside the adductor canal above vasoadductor membrane the varied neurovascular interrelationship resulting from these events divide adductor canal into three parts proximal adductor canal mid adductor canal and distal adductor canal in the sonoanatomy of thigh at various levels identifying the apex of the femoral triangle is very essential to decide the territories of femoral triangle and adductor canal as shown in the figure c the apex of the femoral triangle can be identified where medial borders of sartorius and adductor longus muscle overlies forming sign of 3 or kissing sign so the region above or proximal to the apex of the femoral triangle is femoral triangle and distal or below the apex of the femoral triangle is adductor canal area the saphenous nerve which is nothing but the continuation of the posterior division of femoral nerve crosses thigh from anterior to the medial side and travels from deeper to the superficial plane the presence of vasoadductor membrane is peculiarity of the adductor canal region here the green line just below the sartorius only in the adductor canal region represents vasoadductor membrane due to presence of vasoadductor membrane the lower border of sartorius appears bilayer in the adductor canal region 
to avoid motor blockade due to involvement of femoral nerve the femoral triangle block is given in the distal most part of the femoral triangle mainly targeting saphenous nerve under the sartorius it covers antero medial innervation of the knee joint here a represent proximal femoral triangle or area of the inguinal crease b represent distal femoral triangle and c represents the apex of the femoral triangle showing kissing sign or sign of 3 as mentioned before due to varied neurovascular relationships adductor canal can be divided into three parts proximal adductor canal just distal to the apex of the femoral triangle mid adductor canal where descending genicular vessels and saphenous nerves come out of the adductor canal and adductor longus muscle replaced by the adductor magnus muscle and distal adductor canal where the femoral vessel dip into the adductor hiatus to become popliteal vessels so no nerve lie in the mid and distal adductor canal we can see the saphenous nerve between the sartorius and gracilis in the subcutaneous plane in the distalmost part of the adductor canal various dye studies in subsequent years demonstrated the spread of dye in the popliteal area when injected into the adductor canal below vasoadductor membrane whereas dye injected into the femoral triangle remain under the sartorius and never reach the popliteal region This is a recently published article where the summary of all dye studies is given. So, as per these studies, 10 ml of the dye injected into the femoral triangle or 10 ml injected into the proximal adductor canal showed no involvement of popliteal plexus. Whereas increasing the volume from 10 to 15 to 20 ml in the proximal adductor canal showed involvement of popliteal plexus. and 10 ml of dye injected into the distal adductor canal also showed involvement of popliteal plexus dr ritesh roy described 4 in 1 block and modified 4 in 1 block for knee joint and below knee joint surgeries in his article he mentioned about spread of radio contrast dye into the popliteal fossa around the possible location of the sciatic nerve when injected at the distal adductor canal area this is schematic representation of the adductor canal which is nothing but the muscular aponeurotic tunnel leading to the funnel of the popliteal fossa here if you see the saphenous nerve enters the adductor canal and leaves the adductor canal in the mid adductor canal portion by piercing vasoadductor membrane the posterior division of the obturator nerve directly enters into the adductor hiatus and goes in the popliteal fossa as per the hilton law sciatic nerve and its branches tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve while crossing the knee joint gives articular branches to the knee joint these articular branches coming out from the sciatic nerve tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve along with the articular branches of the obturator nerve posterior division of obturator nerve forms popliteal plexus which innervates posterior knee joint as well as all intraarticular component so if you inject around 10 to 20 ml of the drug into the proximal adductor canal area it involves saphenous nerve in the adductor canal as well as posterior division of the obturator nerve at the adductor hiatus and then popliteal plexus in the popliteal region further increasing the volume from uh, 20 to 30 ml it also started involving the parent now like tibial now common peroneal now in the popliteal fossa further increasing the volume to 30 to 40 ml it started involving the sciatic now in the popliteal region this is adductor magnus it takes its origin from the inferior pubic ramus ischio pubic ramus and ischial tuberosity it is having oblique head and vertical head the oblique head gets inserted over the medial leaf of linea aspera and the vertical head gets inserted over the adductor tubercle of the femur there is a opening between oblique and vertical head this opening is called as adductor hiatus 
through which the femoral vessels enters and the femoral vessel after entering through the adductor hiatus they reaches the popliteal fossa and continues as a popliteal vessel so in the posterior aspect the femoral vessel become popliteal vessels and they are closely related to the sciatic nerve which is lying in the popliteal fossa so if you inject drug into the ad proximal adductor canal area the drug gets tracked with the femoral vessel and enters into the adductor hiatus from adductor hiatus it enters through it enters to the popliteal fossa in the popliteal fossa it gets distributed cranially and caudally and depending upon the volume it start involving the neural element initially the popliteal plexus and then sciatic nerve this is cross section at the level of distal thigh here if you see on the medial side you will see the sartorius muscle vastus medialis muscle and adductor magnus muscle so this area is of adductor canal area so if you inject drug in the adductor canal region the drug gets tracked along with the femoral vessel and enter into the opening of the adductor magnus muscle which is called as adductor hiatus so after entering through the adductor hiatus it reaches to the posterior compartment of the distal thigh which is popliteal fossa area and depending upon the volume it gets spread over the intermuscular spaces and started involving the sciatic nerve which lies in the vicinity of the same area the type of local anesthetic volume and concentration used in the hypac block also play an important role we recommend to use the 0.1% of the ropivacain with the volume of 30 to 40 ml because the ropivacain is known to have motor sparing effect also the volume is sufficient to involve the sciatic nerve when injected into the proximal adductor canal area and the concentration if you see the arrangement of the nerve fiber in any particular nerve have mental area as well as core area the core area is occupied by motor nerves whereas the mental area is occupied by the sensory nerve fibers so the diffusion of the local anesthetic from mental to the core area is concentration dependent so if you use diluted local anesthetic or low concentration local anesthetic it mainly involves the mental nerve fibers which is nothing but the sensory nerve fibers so with this diluted local anesthetic which is recommended as a 0.1% of ropivacain 30 to 40 ml we can achieve the selective sensory blockade without affecting any muscle power or motor weakness so this is the basis for the differential blockade when we which we observe during spinal anesthesia so initially b fibers that autonomic fibers gets involved later on sensory fibers pain fibers get involved and motor fibers gets involved at the last hypac block is given in the post operative period only after regaining of the toe movements and before pain sensation starts so first step of the hypac block is assessment of the toe movements whether it has come or not after assessing the toe movements the identification of the apex of the femoral triangle by keeping the probe over the mid thigh location and identifying the apex of the femoral triangle after identifying the apex of the femoral triangle as a sign of 3 which is nothing but the intersection point of the medial border of sartorius and adductor longus muscle as mentioned before next step is to locate the proximal adductor canal area by moving the probe distal to the apex of the femoral triangle and keeping the adductor longus muscle in the picture so now we are into the proximal adductor canal area after locating the proximal adductor canal area the needle is inserted from lateral to medial direction in plane and initially it targets the saphenous nerve which lies below the vasoadductor membrane and 10 to 15 ml of local anesthetic is deposited around the saphenous nerve and remaining local anesthetic is deposited 
next to the saponous nerve or perivascularly along the femoral vessels so you can keep the probe over the popliteal fossa to see the drug spread around the sciatic nerve before and after the hypac block because of the involvement of the sciatic nerve in the hypac block the hypac block was initially described as an indirect anterior approach of the popliteal sciatic nerve block hypac block can be differentiated from conventional adductor canal block based on the block site and location local anesthetic type concentration and volume timing of the block indication and analgesia coverage the hypac block is mainly given at the proximal adductor canal whereas adductor canal block it is can be given at mid thigh location proximal or distal adductor canal the local anesthetic for hypac block is fixed 0.1 ropin of 30 to 40 ml whereas for conventional adductor canal block it is variable the volume is also variable hypac block is mainly given post operatively after regaining the toe movement but before pain sensations whereas adductor canal block can be given pre operatively as well as post operatively hypac block is described for all the surgeries below knee joint whereas adductor canal block is described only for knee joint surgeries due to complete coverage of all the innervation below knee joint hypac block provides complete analgesia whereas adductor canal block due to incomplete coverage of knee joint innervation it provides only partial analgesia and adductor canal block is not described in any of the literature for below knee surgeries in our prospective feasibility study of the hypac block the post block scanning distally into the popliteal region confirmed drug spread around the popliteal sciatic nerve in 73% of the patient with a mean distance from the popliteal crease of 8 to 12 cm in 20% of the patient we could not scan sciatic nerve due to presence of above knee cast or slap post block scanning proximally into the distal femoral triangle area revealed drug spread around the saphenous nerve in 100% of the patient and around nerve to vastus medialis in 93% of the patient however none of the patient had a drug distribution around the femoral nerve in proximal femoral triangle area the total duration of the analgesia in most of the patient was more than 24 hours during this th study three patient complained of moderate to severe pain with the vas score more than 6 within the expected duration after the hypac block the in increased analgesic demands in these patients necessitated rescue analgesia in the form of intravenous tramadol 100 mg post operatively subsequent evaluation in this patient identified a tight slab as a cause of severe pain that was promptly removed by surgical team leaving all three patients comfortable and pain free this out of proportion pain in this patient suggested involvement of ischemic and chemically mediated pain pathway apart from the post surgical inflammation such ischemic pain may not get blocked by active ra technique in this case it was hypac block the regional analgesia technique for the knee surgery have been evolving to improve procedural outcome reduce complication and improve patient satisfaction with the introduction of ultrasound into regional analgesia practice the perioperative analgesic strategies for knee surgeries and below knee surgeries have undergone a conceptual revolution in the last decade apart from providing optimal analgesia and intraoperative clear surgical field regional anesthesia also helps in reduction of major post operative complications like deep venous thrombosis pulmonary embolism requirement of blood transfusion pneumonia and respiratory depression in this figure you can see 
the regional analyst say option for knee joint and below knee joint surgery from center to periphery all these motor sparing blocks are described for the knee surgeries except high pack block caps block and four in one block which is described for the below knee joint surgery the application of regional analgesia in below knee surgery always create a dilemma situation due to belief that it can mask acute compartment syndrome symptoms and put the patient at unacceptably high risk of serious morbidity however evidence of such assumption is lacking we believe that regional analgesia neither masks the clinical symptoms of impending compartment syndrome nor prevents acute compartment syndrome development the development of acute compartment syndrome can be inevitable under favorable circumstances regardless of presence or absence of regional analgesia therefore the mere fear of the preventable and treatable condition such as acute compartment syndrome should not deprive patients of their right to remain pain free with effective and complete post operative pain management so the ideal regional analgesia technique for below knee surgery should provide effective analgesia without masking the symptoms of developing compartment syndrome and facilitate early mobilization and discharge comparing all regional analgesia technique used for below knee surgery high pack block showed advantage of complete analgesia coverage motor sparing procedure specific and opioid sparing effect as well as era suitability for this high pack block special patient positioning is not required even the complete analgesic coverage is obtained with a single injection it is also suitable for above knee cast or slab and it is not known to mask the symptoms of the compartment syndrome so high pack block sounds like a high pack so high pack is nothing but the infiltration between the popliteal artery and the capsule of the knee joint if we compare the high pack block with the high pack block the high pack block is given for below knee surgeries it is nothing but the nerve block plexus block and facial plane block it involves saphenous nerve posterior division of obturator nerve popliteal plexus tibial nerve common peroneal nerve and sciatic nerve it is mainly given in the post operative period and it is a procedure specific and motor sparing block and local anesthetic volume which is used is 30 to 40 ml whereas in high pack block it is mainly given for knee joint surgeries especially total knee orthoplasty surgery it acts as a field block it blocks the popliteal plexus along with the genicular nerves it is given only in the pre operative period it is motor sparing but not procedure specific and the local anesthetic usually volume is around 20 ml most importantly we should know the analgesic coverage of re each regional analgesia option to use them as per the analgesic requirement if you see it here the high pack block covers all the innervation below the knee joint so territories of the sciatic now as well as saphenous now
थैंक यू सो मच